We read today from the second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 8, verses 1 to 15. Isn't it interesting how certain subjects of conversation can be taboo at certain times? In our society, we seem to talk a lot about sex, which used to be taboo in the past. But many of us are reluctant to talk about death or money as another taboo subject. At least we're very hesitant to ask for money or for charitable donations or to disclose our own income or how much we give away. Paul, in this letter to the Christians at Corinth, is skirting around a sensitive topic and it's about money. He's basically asking them to hold a collection for the poor in the church in Jerusalem, but he's being circumspect about it. He hints, instead of saying it outright, he says, other churches have been very generous, although they are quite poor. Uh, he says, you're brilliant at so many aspects of the Christian faith. I'm sure you'll be brilliant at this as well. He says, I'm not telling you, I'm asking or suggesting, and so on. But then Paul gives us a wonderful saying that lifts the whole passage. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. What a gem. What a beautiful summary of the incarnation and salvation. Christ left the riches of heaven to become a mere human, born into poverty. Not only that, but he died in complete naked poverty on the cross, deprived of absolutely everything. By that death we are saved, since by faith in him we can come to share the riches of being a child of God and entering his kingdom. As a model of giving, it couldn't be clearer or stronger. We follow the one who gave his whole life, his whole self, who told us to take up our cross and follow him, follow his example. So, are we expected to give everything and impoverish ourselves? No, not in that literal sense. Paul goes on to refer to the story of the manna in the wilderness, and he quotes from Exodus how everyone collected just what they needed and how that provided enough for all, whether they picked up more or less. And he talks about aiming at a fair balance between abundance and need. Our taxation system is supposed to achieve this, and I suppose it's a step in the right direction, but a very imperfect one, of course. Voluntary giving helps redress some of the imbalances in our society, as well as being good for us to learn generosity. Abundance is what you and I have. There's plenty of need in the world and no shortage of charities set up to respond to those needs, including, of course, our churches, who have no state support and who largely depend on voluntary donations. Perhaps it's time to review our giving, our stewardship, how much we give and where we give it to. Paul says, the gift is acceptable according to what one has not according to what one does not have, meaning our giving should be proportionate to our means. In the Old Testament, they gave one-tenth of everything. Muslims are obligated to give one-fortieth of their disposable income, plus other voluntary giving on top. Have you ever worked out what proportion of your income you give away, or compared your giving to the amount spent on, say, coffees or beers. It could be a worthwhile calculation. It might give us pause for thought to do that. For your sake, he became poor, so that by his poverty, you might become rich. 